Welcome to IR Talks with Tata Steel, a knowledge series powered by Tata Steel Industrial Consulting. In this four-part series, we'll interview senior leaders from Tata Steel who will speak on various aspects related to manufacturing and industrial relations. Our first guest for this series is Pankaj Kumar, former Chief Total Quality Management and Corporate Quality Assurance at Tata Steel. He'll share the best practices on TQM and TPM at Tata Steel. Pankaj will also talk about how Tata Steel's enhanced business process capabilities help in improving profitability. Pankaj has been a lifer at Tata Steel, having started as a graduate trainee in 1986. A mechanical engineer from NIT Allahabad, Pankaj has done his master's in industrial engineering from IIT Delhi and PhD in quality management and predictive analysis from IIT Kharagpur. Welcome to the show, Pankaj. Thank you. Thank you, Pajit. OK. Uh, in India, you know, for many years, uh, companies lived by a philosophy where they produced and what they wanted, and the market would absorb it. With, uh, you know, with this myth, the entire focus of the business was on push and not on pull. How and when did this uh, mindset change? I think it's a very, very relevant question, Prajal. And uh, I recall uh, when Tata Steel uh, also was a similar situation in early 90s. And uh, last about 20 years back, when we engaged one of our Japanese TQM consultant, Dr. Kano, I think everybody knows Dr. Kano because he's one of the most yeah. knowledgeable living person as of now in TQM. I think he also told us a very similar words. Huh? He used to say that many companies in the world or many industries in the world today follow the principles of what he used to call product out versus market in. He said, you know, the concept is to explain like this, that, you know, I have a product. I go to the market and say that I have this product, please come and buy. Yeah. There was a time when, you know, this, this philosophy or this strategy used to work. But then people realize that rather than having this strategy, the better thing is the company should go to the market, understand the customer's requirement and behavior, and then you develop a product in line with that. And then you say, I'm in the market. I think this concept is very, very relevant now. Uh, nowadays, I think this push part has almost gone, in my view, because yeah. companies can't, can't, can't survive now. Uh, various industries in India uh, have you know, realized this at various point of time. And if you recall, since I, I, have, I come from a steel industry, uh, I have seen, and I've seen uh, early 80s, early 90s, we used to have a similar situation where, you know, steel being a regulated industry and government is to decide which company will make what steel and sell to whom at what price. Uh, customer didn't have any option. They, there was a huge gap between supply and demand. And, you know, we, although we used to call as a, as a marketing and sales department, I'm talking about early 90s, but no yeah. marketing, only sales. And uh, our marketing people, so-called marketing people or sales people will come to our office in Calcutta. Uh, they will normally supposed to come at 10, they will come at 11, 11, 30. They will see a lot of people queuing outside their office and they say, who are these people? They are all customers. Customers with a check in their hand and they want steel. Uh, they want steel with, with it in advance. So there is yeah. time. There is time and today uh, it is otherwise. Our marketing people are there queuing in front of a customer. Please tell, please take our steel. So I think it has it has been significant change, change for the good, because I don't think today in the world anybody can afford saying that we are in the push market. We can produce whatever we want and sell to the customer. It's better that now we understand from the customer what do they need and then we make accordingly. So in present world, uh, push is no more uh, is something which needs to be done. It's good that most of the Indian companies also have realized it, including Tara Street realized it early 90s. And today, if we are still surviving, even after over 100, 110 years of our existence, it's primarily because we also realize how the world is changing and how the customer is changing. It's better that we also become customer centric. For Tata Steel, you know, was it a, uh, you know, change in the market scenario that forced it to rethink? Or because Tata Steel has been a pioneer in terms of TQM and uh, TPM. So, so I would say I would say like this that in in early uh, as I said in the uh, earlier that steel being a regulated industry, 
Yeah. Uh, I think when Mr. Jasimha Rao became the Prime Minister and Dr. Manmohan Singh with the finance, we started getting the first signal that steel is going to get de-urbanized. And okay. very soon, uh, private players also will be, you know, will be will be will be allowed to start plants in India. That time, Tata Steel was the only private company in in the in, in India, and all other steel players were government government controlled plants. And our our top management, including Dr. Irani, he understood that you know the mindset of our people is that you know they are sort of a total push uh, you know mindset. If we don't change our mindset, then we will not survive going forward because not only private other private players in India, but some of the global steel plant also can come and start plant, you know, having yeah. plant in India, and then we'll have a free competition. Somehow in earlier scenario, we were doing better than the sale plants, uh, typical big, big government plants. So we are slightly more efficient and we're having huge profit. But that was not guaranteed once other private players is to come, can come or the global player can come. So it was not that we were we may be slightly proactive in understanding what is going to happen. And our top management understood this quite early, and we started changing our people, including mindset change, including initiation of many TQM and DPM initiatives to facilitate that. So it's not that we faced a problem and we did it. We anticipated no, we were, that it was a problem and it was slightly earlier compared to others. We entered the market conditions and that's, so that's oh, great. great. Tata Steel has been one of the pioneers in introducing TQM, you know, led by late JJ Irani. Uh, you know, when, uh, when and how did the Indian manufacturing sector realize the importance of TQM and TPM? You know, did it happen when the Indian manufacturers started competing with the global pairs, both in India and the international market? So, uh, last week I was in Madras, uh, Chennai, actually we having a uh, you know, annual conference of Indian Society for Quality. And uh, yeah. I think many of you will know Mr. Janak Mehta, who was a person who was working that time with CII. And he, although his name is Janak Mehta, Janak, but he is actually the Janak of Quality Movement in, uh, in India. Okay. And uh, that was the time in early, you know, late 80s, uh, when, you know, Indian economy was opening up like steam. And, uh, a lot of companies realize that going forward, there will be a lot of competition, you know, from both not only from Indian but also global players in the country. So I recall in late 80, 89, in fact, uh, CII has organized a tour of 20 top Indian, you know, businessmen uh, or women to Japan because uh, TQM is to very popular and. People say if you want to be competitive and customer centric, then you must also see some of the Japanese practices. Dr. Yeah. Rani also was part of that, that delegation. And 20 people went to Japan for a two weeks tour. I think very rare where the top men of a company spent two weeks full time in Japan going to various companies and see what sort of quality management activities they are doing. And I recall when Dr. Rani came back in 1989 to Tata Steel. He had told us that we should start implementing TQM because if we don't do it, we will not survive going forward. And I recall that time in 89, he has given us a target that, you know, if a company do good activity of TQM, then they also are assessed by a Japanese, you say, and they also got better award something called Deming Prize, which is considered as a Nobel Prize in the quality management area. And I recall he had given us a target that time that in 1995, we must get Deming Prize. Well, in real sense, Tata Steel got this prize in 2008, which is only 13 years later. Yeah. But actually, the activity started in 89-90, uh, uh, much before actually economy started opening, steel plants getting privatized, more competition started coming. So we were one of the you know, first you know, movers in this area, and we are much better prepared compared to many of them. So, so today, we say that we are one of the most efficient steel plant in the world. I think it is also primarily because of some of the activities we started in early 90s, right. which actually uh, gave us the advantage of the prime mover. So what about the other companies? Do you think it is uh, TQM is practiced by other manufacturing companies? And when did they start doing it? You know, it's... So actually, in my view, most of most of uh, you know, these TQM and TPM activities in India actually yeah. started in the automobile companies. Okay. And uh, the, the group which have been most pioneer in my view, who started this is the TBS group or the Sundaram group. Okay. Although Mandras also started quite early and they were also 
one of the first auto tractor manufacturer to get deming prize in all so in my view tbs group uh, mahindra's they were the pioneer in starting these activities because they faced the situation and the competition much earlier than a process industry or steel plant faced and so they were much more consumer oriented industry absolutely and then although we were some of, we were the suppliers of you know uh, steel to uh, to automobile companies we also learned uh, many of these practices from them in fact we also got that what steel what automobile companies are facing steel industry may face tomorrow so we you know we also started uh, uh, you know in anticipation but in india i think as i said tbs and mahindra have been pioneer in starting this activity but nowadays almost every company in india if you see every group this tqm tqm is something that become a so you know uh, so necessary and most of mandatory activity that companies can't survive unless they become more customer centric more fact based decision making more uh, they do better day to day management so nowadays i think it has become sort of a hygiene now to have these activities but yes in early 90s uh, you know it was a uh, sort of a you know pioneering activity done by some of these companies to actually do uh, these things well in tarashi been in tarashi and in india so somewhere 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 you know proactive measures somewhere forced by the market changes that's Absolutely. how and some preempted to do thing what about smes and uh, uh, you know msmes do they do they practice tqm and uh, you know tpf or so initially, you know, initially initially puzzle uh, in india we didn't have much expertise on you know tqm and tpm concept so necessarily we needed to engage somebody from japan i recall in uh, early 2000 when we started tpm we engaged a consultant from jipm japan when okay. we started our tpm activities in 2004 we we engaged dr kanu and lot of japanese uh, Uh, no consultants so actually tata steel that way we didn't have financial problem so we wanted to hear and listen from the people who invented this concept we didn't want to hear from second third fourth party so yeah. we could afford and we could do that but let me also tell you that you know these consultants are very costly consultants right? you know i recall when we used to have uh, dr kano with us we used to pay him around 4000 dollar a day which Uh, you know, a, uh, with yeah. many, many small companies, yeah. yeah, that are also the early 2000s, it will be quite quite a lot of money. And uh, so while big company could afford this, the SMEs actually could not afford this. Yeah. And that may be one of the reason why many of the SMEs could not start this activity earlier because you know they could afford Japanese concept. And in India, there was a not that much of expertise available. But now with many companies practicing. now there are many indian counterparts also are available the indian consultants are available who also have good knowledge of not only the subject but also they have implemented in their own companies a lot of people who have retired from these companies like mahindra or you know tbs group or even in tata steel who were the people who were handling these activities when they were practicing this so now smes also have started using some of these people who are not as costly as Yeah. and i think that that's the reason the promotion or the the speed or has quite uh, no improved quite a lot and many smes now has also are going to this area and so the main main thing is that they have understood or they have realized the importance of tqn and tpm and are working accordingly you know it's so one thing puzzle i also realize that why you know if you want to do something the subject matter expertise is important you need to have knowledge yeah. but unless the knowledge also is implemented and what we call it applied knowledge if yes. i can go and read books about tqm and then i say i do everything about it yeah. it does not serve the purpose for the industry unless you implement this knowledge and then you get a, a different type of knowledge that you know what are the practical difficulties in implementation how do you convince people how do you take people along with i think these are something which normally the consultant can't teach you because they most of them have not practiced themselves they may be having a good knowledge about the subject so in india i think there are a lot of expertise available now where people not only have got the knowledge but they also have applied the knowledge in their own respective companies so i think that in my view is a much better situation that you know people can actually not only give you the concept but they can also tell you what are the challenges 
and how to face these challenges if company implements and plus i think the consumer has also changed you know the consumer has has been exposed to better products yes. you know quality products which is i think forcing companies across you know levels or you know irrespective of the size to come up with quality products because if you give an inferior product to any of the consumers they will reject it you know they might buy it once yeah. Yeah. they are much more informed they are much more knowledgeable about what level of product or services are available in the market both domestic as well as international and now in india also nobody will compromise on quality they all want that that you are the world class product as far as uh, is possible you are right. so okay you know there there is uh, also uh, you know american principles of tqm and there is the japanese principle of tqm how how are the two different you know uh, i think it's a very interesting very interesting question present because you know uh, this sometimes i also read you know american tqm or a japanese tqm yeah uh, i personally have uh, not known much about american tqm i only knew japanese tqm because when we started yeah. tqm we started with the japanese people but yeah. i happened to attend many of the classes uh, by many of the japanese gurus and then we also come to know that most of the tqm concepts today yeah. actually they are developed in us okay. now when we talk about uh, we shivart or we talk about deving or we talk about duran they are all people they all are american born huh? all the tqm concepts were actually started or initiated in us unfortunately that remained the knowledge uh, that the knowledge was not applied japanese people are very good in knowing from others and doing it implementation themselves they actually i should say copied they actually adopted this american knowledge into their own plan they improvise it they make it as applied knowledge and then they started teaching others that how a knowledge can be applied and then it can impact in fact in my view and many people say that most of the concepts were developed in us but this concept was actually implemented in japan that's why in my view there is no american tqm or a japanese tqm american tqm was more of a theory japanese tqm is theory plus implementation uh, knowledge and now they are teaching the whole world what is tqm is so concepts originated in us implemented in japan and now they are teaching the whole japan is teaching the whole world what is tqm so in my view what? today it is only japanese tqm because you know this is what is most popular and okay. this is what most practiced one but in in india if we see you know what we practice in india is a culmination yeah. of both the japanese and the american uh, absolutely even even if you recall uh, till till 1950s or 60s um, japanese quality was not so good and americans were much ahead when much you ahead. say uh, automobile companies you know ford chrysler general motors were the most of the no most of the vehicles used to come from them yeah. and japanese vehicles were or automobiles were not very popular in early 70s uh, uh, they started competing well and they started competing to create action with the american companies and they started like toyota and others nissan they started having more market share compared to these companies and suddenly these companies realized that these comp- these uh, japanese vehicles from where they have got this knowledge of making good quality product and all then they came to know that one of some of our people like deming or duran they are the people they have these people went to japan they taught them you know what is quality and how to implement quality america american people never implemented that but japanese people implemented them and they got benefit and yes. they got so much of benefit they started surpassing you know the american standards and then americans realized that our people develop knowledge but we didn't use it japanese people used it and they are competing with us so they started calling deming and duran back to japan and said oh, also teach us So they said, "I should teach you. You never step, took us seriously. Japanese people took us seriously, so they they improved." They improved. So that was the time when America also realized that you know, while they are good in developing knowledge, but then knowledge also has to be implemented. And you get benefit out of it. Japanese people. It's like you, are, you you can have the best of the tutor in the world, but if you absolutely. don't study yourself, you will not be able to score. Absolutely, absolutely. Great. 
you know, uh, if I ask you, how has TQM and TPM changed Tata Steel as a company? Or, you know, uh, how has Tata Steel benefited from it? You know, you can, uh, in terms, if I if I try to quantify it or if I say in terms of numbers, how would you say that? So I will, I will, I will give a slightly longer answer to this question because, you know, uh, so Tata Steel, when we say it's TQM journey of Tata Steel, it has been more than, you know, 30 years journey. Years. As I said earlier, uh, 1990 early we started and then when our Dr. Rani went to Japan and he saw many of the good quality measuring practices, he came back and you know, said that we need to implement that. There was no structure that time, we never used to have a department called Total Quality Management or an improvement department. So first time in 91-92 we started uh, a group called Total Quality Implementation and we started learning how to do that. So many things like, you know, when we talk about ISO 9000 quality management system, which is very popular at that time in the world, to, to make some very strong foundation of people following standard operating procedures and, you know, doing things as it should have been done, uh, involving people in improvement activities in terms of Japanese quality circle or a succession scheme, doing improvement projects through Juran's quality improvement projects. A lot of such things are started. In, uh, okay. in say late 90s in our company and then we started understanding uh, you know, quality and customer see in our company that time we used to say a thing called small Q and a big Q you know, we always used to say quality means quality of product you take a steel steel quality is a you know Q quality Q then Dr. Rani and others also say that you see when you say quality, it's not only quality of product, quality of everything we do. So it is to say quality of life. So for example, whatever we do, whether it is do internally or externally, quality has to be inbuilt in everything. So we, we started the concept of don't only focus on you know, small Q, which is a product quality. You should focus on the big Q, which is the quality of everything which is, which is done by anybody. Whether it is of operation department or maintenance department, service department, because there is external customer or internal customer, whatever we do, or we also say customer or excellence at every touch point. Okay. So a lot, of, a lot of such learning happened uh, during during those, those, those times. If you see tangible benefits out of quality activities, as I said in early 90s, we never used to understand customer requirement. Customer used to, you know, we were always in a monopoly situation. Customer always used to be after us. Delivery compliance, customer complaints were some of the words which we have never thought about. In fact, we never used to even monitor what is called delivery compliance, what is called customer complaint. No customer can dare complain. Otherwise, his next delivery will be delayed, you know, and she will not get. So those used to be the mindset in early 90s. Now, once we started this quality concept, then we started understanding customer requirement. We started developing products as per the need of customer requirement. This also became one of the metrics, how many new customers we have acquired, how many new products we have developed. Then we also started monitoring is the customer, we also putting a place a customer complaint handling process in case a customer complaint, who will log it, who will act, you know, analyze it, who will you know, respond him. We started monitoring cycle time of how fast, how quickly we are resolving customer complaints. Now, once these metrics started coming, we started getting measured and monitoring that. Then we realized that where we are at the base level. Okay. okay. And then we said, okay, we are not good enough. We need to improve. I recall, I will, I don't have the data for 90s, but in early 2004, okay. when we, when we, when we doing, started doing TQM activities with the help of Japanese, I recall that time our customer complaints, you know, when we supply a product to a customer and customer find there's some defect in the product and he will complain, we started monitoring that and we used to monitor in terms of PPM, that's our parts per million. This means if okay. we, uh, uh, if you, if you supply 1 million ton steel, how much will, how much tons of steel are under, under defect. That time, that figure used to be around 6,000 PPM, 6,000 PPM means if we supply 1 million ton steel, 6,000 tons is under defect. Under defect. Okay. If you see last month, 
this figure of 6000 ppm has come down to around 250 ppm so if you can say you know that is the level of improvement that has happened into you know the defect level i'm just talking about one metric which is one of the most important yeah. metric, that how much defective product you are producing and supply to the customer but if you say today you are the world class today even today we are not the world class while you could have reduced from 6000 to 250 world class is still in two digits now less than 100 ppm okay so while we could have been improved uh, 20 times but still we are struggling that can this figure can come to two digits less than 100 ppm i am told nippon steel even today is less than 100 ppm we are okay. we are trying to match uh, although those companies have a advantage of better raw material which we don't have advantage but in spite of you know customer does not understand whether your raw material is okay or not okay they yeah, want they want only good product so we are our next target is while we have done a huge improvement our delivery compliance is around 98 99% our ppm is around 200 ppm but still we are not the world class and we still you know, struggling to do better better than better so while huge improvement has happened as far as uh, new product development as far as uh, defect as far as delivery compliance and as a result of that we have some of our products are being sold at premium today even in this present market some of our long products even today are being sold at a premium because you know if somebody wants to make a house you know the saria which we make actually always sells at a premium because is a ghar to har din nahi banta hai to tata steel product will be better so it has to be you know has to be long lasting so i think quality and customer improvement has played a great role in what tata steel today it is it has also given us huge financial financial result but then as the japanese concept says that if you make good quality product and service customer will be happy in customer will be happy he will give you more order you will get more profit so profit is always outcome but it will come you focus on quality and customer profit is guaranteed tata steel has got huge advantage can tqm and tpm influence the market can tqm and tpm be implemented together or are there any complexities in implementing the both together due to you know both <laughs> similarities <laughs> and <laughs> so this is i think very very important question and many people ask me and yeah. in fact in india if in india if you see like even in a sundaram group as i said earlier they were the pioneers yeah. in quality and their activities some of their plants started tqm first and okay. later went to tpm okay. some of their plants started tpm first and later went to tqm they when see mahindra mahindra farm equipment sector they yeah. started with tqm first they were the they also got deming prize due to tqm then they shifted to tpm mahindra automobile sector they first started with tpm and then went to tqm yeah. so there have been stories in india where companies have done it at different sequence at tata steel we started some tqm activity in the beginning in early 90s then we realized that some of the foundation which needs to be made where the tpm concepts can work better okay so we actually shifted to tpm and tpm actually helped as a lot to make okay. a very strong foundation okay like when we say i wish to teach japanese tqm we should say in japanese tqm book the first chapter is always fibers fibers you know how do you do housekeeping so yeah. the the side side and side so sort of things while while many concept many many way people know know this tqm concept starts with fibers okay so it makes a very strong foundation to do second third level of improvement in my personal view if somebody ask me that if a company wants to start good improvement activities and they are at say zero base then i will certainly prefer that you first start tpm okay okay that makes your fundamentals and basics very strong once you are fundamentals are strong then you can go to a second level third level with help of tqm because tqm concepts are very good you know going to a slightly higher level of work in my view tata steel did in the right sequence first developing good concepts good foundation through tpm and then tqm so 
while concepts are same, but the sequence in my view may be different. Yeah. Company may adopt different way, but I will certainly prescribe first TPM and TQ. But I will certainly never prescribe a, any company to do both together because okay. after all, these are two different subjects. They use different language. While the overall objective may be same, sometimes there are two different consultants coming to you. One teaching TPM, one teaching TQM. Sometimes they, you know, it's very, very, very difficult to follow two gurus because yeah. and sometimes they fight with each other, uh, telling that this is better or that is better. So in my view, while you can have any sequence of using, but don't do parallel here. You first use one, take full advantage of that. Try to do further. Do other one, take full advantage of that. But in my view, never do together. Otherwise, you'll be confused. They're doing too, too many duplicate activities going forward. But using TQM or TPM first, would it depend upon the size of the company or what? What? How? What would? I don't think size makes a difference. In my view, in my view, yeah. manufacturing companies, manufacturing companies, yeah. TPM concepts are more popular today in India. Uh, yeah. Basic manufacturing company, you start with TPM, make a strong foundation. You want to go a second, third level of improvement, you can also implement some of the TPM concepts. TPM yeah. concepts are not so strong in the service industry because primarily the whole concept of TPM start with the machine and machine yeah. and man interface. So where you have a lot of human being working, a lot of they are working in the machines, man machine interface, TPM works wonderful. So in service industry, it may not be so applicable. So okay. I will describe in a, in a manufacturing industry, start with TPM to make good foundation, migrate to TQM activities. In service okay. industry, there is no other way than only TQM because only TQM, TQM is. You know, can TQM help Indian companies to, you know, change from being, you know, bureaucratic to a more function based or, you know, have an individualistic uh, work culture? I think it's very, very important subject. Very, very important subject for them because, you know, sometimes we used to think that people working in one vertical or a function. Yeah. So one of the things we learned is that many companies, will tell us at one point of time, we were very good in our own department and we used to think we are doing excellent job. Yeah. So everybody doing excellent job in silo, but the company as a whole, we are not doing a good job. I think we learned a lot from Japanese concept that you know, working in a vertical, in isolation, in silo, you may be doing good, but company is not doing good. Unless the, everybody work together and do good for the company, company yeah. does not come to get the advantage. In TQM concepts, one of the vehicle of TQM is called cross-functional management, where they say many of the company's objective cannot be achieved I one department. So say for example, if I want to deliver a product to the customer on time. Now manufacturing department can produce the material. Yeah. The supply chain department has to move it to the customer. The, no, there are a lot of testing thing has to be done, it has to be done by the scientific services. Now, while every individual can do a good job, but it does not guarantee that the customer finally gets the material on time and the right quality. Many of yeah. such things are a cross-functional activity where people from various functions have to come together, have a common objective at the company level, and then do it. So this cross-functional management is something which is a very, very important, where people from various functions come together and see what is the end customer requirement, and together okay. they, they deliver it on time. So, Gone are the days where people can say that I am in manufacturing, I am in maintenance, I am in supply chain, I am in r and I am doing good job in my vertical. That is not that, uh, you know, that those days are gone. Unless we work in a cross-functional manner, all in a task force manner, people from various functions coming together and then seeing where end objective is fulfilled. So I think maybe in India also we had faced this problem once upon a time. But yeah. now I think we also have realized this that this will not work unless people work in a cross-functional manner. Many companies have also started having this hierarchy, you know, based uh, you know, system also getting changed. Uh. People work in a task force level where 
some people from operation and maintenance and service come together and then build the structure around a customer rather than product oriented structure yeah so i think so it is more product based than product based absolutely so yeah. we also on some point of time used to have a product based hierarchy then we also have now you know final customer based hierarchy so you know uh, if you are long products a particular customer then the whole supply chain works how to serve a customer better so the, so there have been changes for good so that finally yeah. the quality has to be been built in the product and service and these as per the requirement of end customer so those things are now the budget customer centricity and build quality to the product you can't so any change in the function hierarchy structure has to yeah. be done to, to fulfill that need great uh you know uh, employee selection training motivation uh, you know is also a very important uh, aspect of tqm you know what has been tata steel's approach on this you know like like you were saying you know even to move from uh, a bureaucratic or a silo kind of uh, work culture to you know where there is an combined effort of the entire team you know so if one wants to achieve that you know training motivation and especially employee selection or uh, you know talent selection is a very important thing you know how does one go about it i think i think this this is a subject which is very close to my heart because i also was in charge of learning and developing our company for 5 years okay. and i also personally learned a lot how important this subject is uh when we were doing tpm in tata steel we actually understood the importance of learning and development in yeah. fact we have if you recall there are eight pillars one of the pillar is devoted to education and training and they say uh, they focus more on the technical competence the technical skills and more for the people in the soft load and he said if a company has to survive in a sustained basis the people who do the job must be given all requisite inputs so that they are the skilled people yeah because if the unless the people who do the, do the work they are given the right skills and expertise the things will not be done so both tqm and tqm give so much of importance to development of competency and skills to the people in data steel we had uh, you know uh, we had an advantage that you no know, since we are coming from a steel plant then we steel plant coming in a place called jamshedpur which is not you know which is, or that also 110 years old plant there was nothing I else was, lost you in, yeah in between nothing, nothing else was available so tata steel also have a you know uh, have a had advantage that we had a learning and development department okay. which had just completed 100 years okay we have a something called technical institute we, where we take people matriculate or a diploma holders from colleges on and matriculate from the market we give them training and then they are people who join the company as skilled people this skill people unless we give them the right type of training the right type of skill the right time then you know they cannot add value when they want to go to the plant to the, to the plant one of the thing which we learned from the japanese is that you know in fact i i recall one of our my guru uh, with whom i wrote a book on the, on the tqm okay he used to go to a Jap- to american company and uh, he used to tell me that you know pakistan i got a different type of experience in a american company as upon a time although the company has improved a lot now he said in that company when i went to two three times i realized that this company most of the people at the top will have yeah. a thinking process that in order to run a company you need two types of people one type of people who have a good knowledge who can think then only thinking is not enough because thinking will only tell you what to do but then somebody what? has to do it then you also need doers huh? so for yeah. doers you need workers yeah. yeah implemented now implementer does not need to think much because they need not to be qualified people they but they should have a very strong hands and legs so that they can work so the company is to believe 
that you know there are two type of people required in a company thinkers and doers thinker who will think and doers who will implement yeah the other belief they had is that people who are qualified academically they are they have the better ability to think so they will take engineers or mbas or phd's and they are given the sign the job of thinking then they said doing is for doing you don't need a mind or you don't need qualification you need only a strong hand and leg so they will take unskilled people and they will say you only do so the concept in that company uh, by guru is to say is that thinkers will only think and doers will only do thinkers yeah. will not do and doers will not think so sometimes if a if a person working in a soft floor he is doing something and he realized something and he said i have a idea and he went to his manager and said sir i was thinking he said yeah thinking is not your job huh? you are supposed to only do it doing huh? you don't think for thinking i am there as an engineer huh? then we realized that the japanese people said this is a very stupid way of working huh? they say the best people who can actually do and know about the job is the people who are doing it okay if just by undergoing undergoing a four year engineering program if i think i know everything about how steel is made then i think you are in totally fool's paradise the people who have been making steel for last 30 40 years they yeah, yeah. have they have much more better knowledge about the subject so he we the, the, the japanese taught us that rather than only putting the skill to the very few people that so called executive cadre people the knowledge must also be imparted to the soft floor people give them so much of skill so that now they have both theory and by practical skills together and they will do the wonder so both tkio and tpo has actually taught us that we must have a very strong learning and development system in addition to managerial competencies also identify technical and behavioral competencies give this knowledge to all level of people and more so to the people in the soft floor but if they are having good knowledge they have good practical experience then these are the people who can do wonder and that's why in our we also realize that, 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 that in addition to managerial competencies being imparted to executive cadre people technical and functional skills are more to be imparted to the soft floor people so okay. they can make better use of this and plus you know when they have got that uh, knowledge so in terms of crisis they can also be thinkers absolutely absolutely in fact the whole concept of agile the yeah. differentiator in my view between a american way of doing tqm and a japanese way of even today is yeah. that the concept of employee involvement these people definitely people think that the people who work with their own hand they know the best about the job yeah. so if you involve them you engage them they will come out with brilliant ideas which you as a officer or executive sitting in the office will never come to know because you don't have the hands on experience because you don't have a hands on i always used to tell and i always used to even today feel ashamed of myself i am a mechanical engineer so when i was in final year i was told that you need to do a specialization in a subject and i was given many options one of the option was automobile engineering i like that i said okay i want to do a specialization in automobile engineering yeah. so i am a mechanical engineer with a specialization in automobile engineering that subject i was the top up okay so after i joined tata steel i purchased a second hand second old second hand maruti car Okay. Okay. And I recall in one of the day I was just going alone, my, driving my car, and the car I had some problem. It stopped and it, it didn't start. Start. Suddenly I realized that, hey, you are a mechanical engineer with automobile engineering specialization. So I and opened the door and I tried something. I couldn't do it. I felt very bad. You know, the what type of four year of engineering and one year of automobile engineering? So I went to a and to a you know a street me i went to a person a 16 years boy totally unqualified uh, uh, no un unqualified person angkut yeah. cha and he came and he 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 you no know, resolve the problem yeah. and i asked him how much you have studied he said no study sir i was just watching 
one of my mechanic and I also become a mechanic. And I felt very bad about myself that, you know, a mechanical engineer, we specialize in automobile engineering, I can't do anything. But a person who just learned doing things, she is a much better uh, you know, uh, implementer. So I think this combination is very good that, you know, skill must be imparted to the people where they make most use of it. And uh, so employee involvement, providing life skills are two very, very important subjects and very important enablers for secure the company. Great. That, that was a very interesting insight. TPM has been reducing, uh, you know, workplace or, you know, shop floor accidents. Uh, what is your take on this? How, what has been your experience? In a steel plant, steel plant, uh, you know, or in fact, in any manufacturing plant, but you, you yeah. find more so in a steel plant, there are very hazardous place to work for. Yes. Uh, not only because of very high temperature operations, no, a lot of you know, environment also is very hazardous in terms of steam, water, a lot of raw material needs to be handled. Just to give you an idea, if I have to make 1 million, 1 ton of steel, I need yeah. to handle 3 tons of raw material. So if in Jamshedpur, if we produce today 10 million ton of steel in a year, 30 million ton of raw materials are come to Jamshedpur that handle yeah. inside the plant and 10 million ton will go outside. So 40 million ton of raw material it will be handled. This makes the place very, you know, cluttered, body, very hazardous. Yeah. So some very fundamental things are very, very important. Things like very basic things like housekeeping. We and steel plant again being a hazardous area, you know, a lot of safety issues also are there. A lot of accidents happen, a lot of fatal accidents also have happened. We also have a history that every year in our company up to 10, 5 to 10 fatal accidents used to happen every year. And these are very common in a steel plant because the type of operations are so hazardous. I think the base, some of the basic concepts of TQM, TPM they say that, you know, you do a much, much better level of housekeeping, keeping right place, things in the right place. And a lot of such better housekeeping and hygiene becomes so hygiene that it also has a lot of impact on, on safety. We found a very, very strong correlation between TPM activities, PIPAS activities and safety activities. Okay. So even now, uh, you know, when we say that we have done 30 years of TQM, TPM activities, we are much better off. Even today, every quarter, we do, we go to every plant and we do a five bus audit of, of a department in terms of whether are there any resistive items at any place, whether items are kept in the right place, whether all the standards are being followed. We realize that this has not only impact a better housekeeping, it has a huge impact on safety. It has reduced, uh, you know, workplace. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. So, in fact, in, in our safety, uh, we call it uh, LTIFR, uh, lost time injury frequency rate, yeah. and the number of incidences have significantly gone down uh, you know, over the last 10, 15 years as a result of many of the activities which were done in the name of TQM and TQM over the last 20 years. Significantly. Okay. okay. Uh, great. Uh, you know, the goal of perfect production and, you know, productive maintenance can become the ride of a roller coaster for companies and production engineers. How does uh, TPM help in achieving this? You know? See, steel plant by design are a very, very heavy machinery, you know, in the plant. Yeah. You have huge equipment, they run under different, very, 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 very challenging conditions, you know, temperature, steam, environment, blah, blah, blah. So maintaining of the equipment is becomes very, very important. So in fact, most of the time the issue will be that you have you have a plant, you have 10,000 crore to start a plant. Thousands of equipments are there in series. If one small equipment doesn't work, the whole plant comes to standstill. Yeah. So maintenance used to be the most challenging one. Uh, and people used to say if the plant is available, plant is producing. So Products maintenance people will be under the tremendous pressure, you know, to make keep the plant uh, you know, uh, uh, running. 
TPM concept, in my view, works very well in this type of scenario where you have huge machinery. So productive maintenance, what you said, I think yeah. plant maintenance is a pillar of TPM, which primarily focuses on how do you keep the plant running always. And availability or number of breakdowns are the one of the most important metrics going forward. TPM concept says that if a machine is there, machine is supposed to run as per the design, but yeah. machines break down sometimes. And the machine can break down because of two reasons. One reason is that machine has some components. Every component has a life. If you are not keeping a track of the life of the component, then yeah. the component will break down, the machine will break down. So the maintenance people should keep a track of life of a component. And just before when the life is going to be over, you take a shutdown, down, replace the part, machine become a new. And you learn again for the life. So due to breakdown, there will not be any plant stopping. But sometimes in spite of machine well maintained, it still breaks down because the people who operate, they don't yeah. operate as per the required condition. They either over speed or they operate into different other, they sometimes mal operator things. So yeah. if operator does it a good operating thing and maintenance people good to good maintenance work, machine will not fail. So TPM teaches a very good concept that how operation and maintenance people together work so that machine will not break down. Operators will operate the machine as per the desired condition and maintenance people will always keep a track of components life and replace a component before it fails. If both these people do the job well, then breakdown will never happen. This was in what we they call it how a, a productive maintenance can happen. What is your uh, advice for companies, you know, uh, maybe, you know, who are planning or working to, you know, implement TQM and TPM in India? You know, what is what is the basic advice that and, and how can Tata Steel help them? You know, the knowledge base that Tata Steel has acquired in all these years, say three decades. Uh, how how will uh, you know? So having worked it, having worked in uh, Tata Steel's corporate TQM and TPM function for twenty five years, yeah. and uh, having a privilege that during this regime when I was there, Tata Steel got many uh, you know recognitions worldwide. Yeah. Be it uh, CITM TPM Excellence Award, be it uh, Deming Application Prize, be it Deming Grand Prize, and we very proudly say that we are the we are the only integrated steel plant in the world outside Japan who yeah. got Deming Prize and Deming Grand Prize. But the journey has been quite long one. I said about 25 plus years of journey. Okay. One my learning is these concepts cannot be done and, it, and implemented within a, a day or a month or a year. It takes time. It takes time. You need more patience. Yeah. yeah, it needs a long term sustainable actions to build that culture in the people that these are important. Uh, other thing which I learned is that many people come and advise you to TPM. Somebody will say, come do TQM. Somebody will come and say, do TOC. Somebody will come and do this. These are typically these consultants or facilitators who are the expert of a particular concept. Okay, and they will, they don't need your requirement. They have their own requirement. That, you know, since I know TPM, they will prescribe you I, TV. Yeah. I know TQM, so you they, they say you come and TQM. You should hear each one of them, but finally you should take a call. What works for you is, is what. By the way, we are not here. We are not here in the company to implement TQM or TPM. We are here in the company to achieve our short-term, long-term objectives. Short -term, long -term goals, yeah. We should only do those things which helps us to achieve our short-term, long-term objectives. In no way TQM and TPM are our objective. These are the enablers, enablers to achieve our objectives. The processes that you follow, yeah. Absolutely. So these are the enablers. They will tell you what to do and how to do to achieve. Objective is that I must make profit, I must make production, I must make my, my customer happy. These are the objectives. In order to achieve that, 
seeing the situation whether tpm helps or tpm helps you should you should, you should ask for that now in our company we were fortunate or we are privileged that in the 25 years we have implemented most of these concepts so other day i was saying in one of the seminar yeah that when we when we started tpm in our company we engaged jipm consultant we learned from horse's mouth what is this concept when we implemented tqm we called people like dr kano and others who are the japanese expert expert when we wanted to do implement toc theory of constraint we went to eliyahu golret who is the inventor of this concept and he came to jamshedpur and taught some of us what is toc now having implemented all these concept in our company now we realize that in which type of scenario which concept works better right okay. while, while every concept can work in any scenario but having implemented this this concept i think we are in a better position to tell or advise people that in what type of scenario you are in and based on our experience we can you know we can guide people which can work faster better and more efficient manner so the evaluation is much more important yes. than implementation so so i think initially we start, we had this people may have knowledge about tqm tpm toc concepts but if these concepts have been implemented into a practical scenario then people will be in a better position to advise you which will work where how and how fast okay i think tsic has been actually built primarily for this purpose Purpose, because yeah. many of the companies many of the people started asking tata steel that having implemented this concept in your company for 25 years having recognized worldwide on this if you have gained some knowledge in some people why do you keep this knowledge to yourself why don't you share this knowledge for in general society benefit okay i think the concept of this this i see is that and i think there are many people in tata steel who have work along with japanese consultants on these concepts they have a good application knowledge and they can be very helpful in sharing their knowledge to anybody in the world if they ask plus you were talking about that evening uh, you know award and they said that you know that knowledge that you have acquired over this year you should spread it across so that others can also benefit absolutely. absolutely in fact they they have taken a commitment from us that it's your duty it's your duty that you must impart you must you know uh, 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 urgently deploy this knowledge to your suppliers to your customers the other thing is you know typically if you give this knowledge somebody to free people don't value it so it is not that tsic wants to make some money out of this for tata steel a company of 1 and 1/2 lakh crore turnover annual getting some crore fees here and there doesn't make a difference but i think its primary purpose is to that any knowledge if you give free people don't value it but then if you have a knowledge you should also impart it but the tsic was originated to serve both this purpose that why not only we earn some revenue for the company by the way one of the objective which many people don't know whatever yeah. revenue will be earned through tsic will be put back yeah. into our education and training system so okay. that we or develop even better ent system going forward so there is something uh, some novel cause they have for this initiative great great talking to you pan your pankaj and that has been you know it has been really insightful for me as well uh, you know and it Thanks was for lovely. That. i think i also uh, i have spoke some spoke something which i uh, i i have been always been thinking about that there are some of the some of the learning which you can get uh, to actually implementing this and thanks for this giving this opportunity to share some of my thoughts on this great i'm sure our you know our viewers who are listening and watching this will really find it insightful and you know learn something from it thank, thank you thank you once again thank you once again thank you